This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about the newly released version of Media Composer, version 8.8. .8. And I have to say, this is probably one of the biggest releases of Media Composer since I believe it was 8.3 or 8.3.1 where larger than HD projects were introduced to Media Composer because this release brings back Phrase Find and Script Sync, two huge features that many editors have been waiting since version 7 because it hasn't been supported in version 8 to upgrade. Well, guess what? With version 8.8 .8 being released, you can now upgrade Phrase Find and Script Sync and use it in the newest version of Media Composer. Now, also in this tutorial, I want to talk about a few other new features, including timeline clip notes, effect caching, and bin sharing on non avid storage systems. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, now before we get into Media Composer, I do want to point out, and actually I'll give a shout out to Chris Bovey because he was the first one to post this over on the Avid Editors of Facebook page, that we do have a sexy looking new application manager for us to use to keep all of our Avid products nice and organized, nice and up to date, as well as keeping track of any of the plugins that we've downloaded to work with on our system. All right. So let's now get into Media Composer and let's talk about the new features that we have at our disposal. I'm just going to command or alt tab into Media Composer. And before we move on, I do want to give a big shout out to the team at EditStock for letting me use their footage in this tutorial. They always have great, fantastic projects for you to work with to hone your editing skills in everything from music videos to commercials and many others. You can definitely check them out at editstock.com. All right, now the first new feature that I'm going to talk about is the fact that we now have the ability to do bin sharing on non avid storage systems. So how do we go about making sure that Media Composer is going to, first of all, recognize non avid storage that's emulating Nexus or emulating ISIS? What we're going to do is we're going to come to our settings. I'm going to come down to the general setting here. There we go. I'm just going to double click. You'll notice right down here at the bottom of our general settings, we have the option to enable bin sharing on third party storage emulating Avid Nexus slash ISIS. So with this selected, you'll see that all bins need to be closed to change this setting. Do I want to continue? Sure, why not? I'm not using any of that storage, so it doesn't really make that big of a difference. But now what would happen is, is that if I happen to open up a bin on a, again, storage that is non-Avid, but it is supported, I'll immediately get a little dialog box telling me that and asking me if I want to use it, then I can go ahead and use it and it's basically going to emulate me working on Nexus or on ISIS. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about the next new feature at our disposal, and that is Timeline Clip Notes. Now, I did have a timeline open somewhere on here, and let's just see which bin I had. Oh, there we go. It's in the Monday bin here. I'm just going to double click on that. I'll just close my other bins here. And Timeline Notes. How do we get in and set timeline notes on different clips in this current timeline that I'm working on. Well, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use either the lift or overwrite segment tools. I'll just use the lift overwrite tool just because I happen to have it here. And I'm just going to come here. I'm going to select a clip. I'm going to right click on it. And you'll notice that all the way down towards the bottom, we have the feature that says add timeline clip notes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select that. And let's actually just check what shot this is before I actually do that here. Okay, this is a cool jumping shot. We have a tilt down. You know what? Let's actually put a note on this shot right here because I think that the tilt down takes too long. So what we want to do is I'm going to come down to our add timeline clip. And I'm just going to say, please speed up tilt down until 
camera is done moving okay and once I have that set what I'm going to do is just simply say okay now these timeline notes are a great way for a producer maybe another editor to sit down go through and make comments on all these different shots in your timeline and you'll have access to them with a click of the mouse now of course the question is you know how do we actually get access to these notes well I'm going to do is navigate up to the tools drop down and I'm going to come down to the timeline clip notes now of course because this is a menu command you can of course map this to one of the composer buttons or map it to a shortcut on your keyboard and once you open it up you'll see you now have the timeline notes at your disposal including the clip name the track that it's on the start and end time code you'll also see that you have the duration and of course the timeline notes itself now what we can also do here is I can right click and I can choose the columns that I want to see so if I really only care about the actual timeline notes itself I can just turn everything else off we'll leave the clip name on and just leave the timeline note on I'm now going to say OK, and there's that clip nice and organized. So this is actually very cool. If you have this window open, let's say you have 15 different notes from a producer that you need to get in and fix. As you're going through, what you could do is once that note is done, you could simply right click on it and come down and say delete note. And that note is now gone. OK. Now, next feature I want to talk about is effect caching. Why would we want to have effect caching? Well, when we're doing all this work, Media Composer's caching frames, we want to make sure that it's storing as many of these frames as possible. So this way we just get better performance on our system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to our settings tab. I'm going to come all the way down to the media cache setting right here. I'm going to double click on it and we want to head over here to the video memory option and you'll find the FX editing video frame cache option right down here at the bottom. I'm simply going to select it. We can then of course also adjust the actual desired video memory in gigabytes to whatever we want it to be. I'll just set it back to two there. And once we have that all set to go, we can say, okay. And if at any point we need to flush that frame cache, we can simply do it right here as well. I'm just going to say apply and I'm going to say, okay. And this leads us right down the path to the biggest update inside of Media Composer. And that is now the support for the newest version of Script Sync and of Phrase Find. That's version two of both. Now, something that's exceptionally important for me to mention, these features are not included in version 8.8. .8. They're available as an option. So keep that in mind. You're not getting them with this version. You have the option to either A, upgrade from the previous version that you were working with or to purchase this option outright. Now, something else I do want to point out is that if you were using the previous version of Phrase Find and let's say that again, Phrase Find and Script Sync on version 7 of Media Composer, you are required to upgrade to utilize those tools inside of version 8.8 .8. so please keep that in mind these are important things to know first of all not getting it for free second of all if you were using it before you do need to pay the upgrade price to work with these fantastic new tools so of course now that does beg the question what is the upgrade price for these tools well for a brand new license for script sync you're looking at 499 dollars us with an upgrade from version 1 of 349 dollars us for the phrase find option, you're looking at $199 for a new license, $149 to upgrade from the previous version. For a combination of both phrase find and script sync, you're looking at $599, which is a savings of $100. And you can upgrade from version one both of these products for an upgrade price of $419. Now, for anyone that wants to use these two products under an educational license, you can get both of these products, a new license, for $49. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about Script Sync in this lesson because I'm going to dedicate an entire lesson to Script Sync coming up very shortly. But before we go on, I do want to mention some of the new features inside of Script Sync version 2.0. Now you have the ability to do the same undo and redo functionality as you currently have inside of Avid Media Composer. You have the ability to view clip frames in their native format of 4x3 and 16x9. You also have additional colors for richer organization and script markup, user notes that allow for collaboration between different users, and a great new feature, you can now edit the text in a script to match what your talent is actually saying 
for the times where they go off script. But again, like I said, I'm going to dedicate an entire lesson to script sync, so we don't need to talk about it anymore. What I do want to talk about, what I do want to show you is how awesome phrase find is because with script sync, it's a very specific product. It's really designed for people that are working on scripted television or even scripted films. Whereas phrase find is a tool that really is good for anybody that works on any project that has on camera dialogue, or even it could be voiceover recorded dialogue or anything like that. Any type of project where you might have a producer or director come to you and say, Hey, you know, our talent, he'd said something about X, Y, Z, and we really need to find it. In the past, what you had to do is sit through and go through every clip, or you just had to sit there for hours and listening to all this stuff and using the markers to find it. We don't need to do that anymore. Now with the power of phrase find, we can find those specific dialogue clips literally in a matter of seconds. Let me show you how it works. What we're going to do is we're going to open the Sunday bin because I want to show you the clips that we're going to be utilizing. And pretty much this is these are the two clips that, that uh, Media Composer is really going to be looking at because not a lot of the rest of my clips have any uh, usable audio with them. These are the two main interview clips. Okay, but what's important to keep in mind is that with Phrase Find, Media Composer is going to be scanning all of the clips in all of your bins. So keep that in mind. What I'm going to do is press Command and F, Control and F for all my Windows friends out there. I'll just move the Find window down a little bit. I want to draw your attention to the bottom of the screen. Two important things down here that you're going to need to make sure are set correctly. The first being the language that you're working in, which is obviously set up when you install Phrase Find. Okay. The next is the Phrase Find index light. You'll see that right now mine is set to solid green. What's going to happen is every time you open a project, Media Composer is going to index all of the bins in the project, and it's going to use obviously that indexing for the Phrase Find purposes. So you want to make sure that you don't have you know a partially filled uh, green dot here, which means that indexing is still going on. You want to make sure your indexing is done before you get in and start searching for stuff. So how complicated is this really? Well, let me show you. I have three pieces of dialogue that he has said in his interview, and I basically just went through and clicked through randomly to get them. So I have no idea where they actually are. So let's use the first one. He somewhere in his interview says, I would cry. So all I'm going to do is navigate to the find window, and I'm simply going to type in, I would cry. Now, it's very cool about the way phrase find works is that you don't need to worry about spelling things correctly. As long as you spell it the way that it sounds, phrase find is still going to be able to find that piece of dialogue. Now, let me show you how fast this works. What we're going to do is we're not going to click on find. We're going to click on phrase find. You'll see that phrase find is working down here in the lower right hand corner. You'll see that it's searching. You're also going to notice that what's going to happen is that when I do my second search, it's going to find it a lot quicker than it did the first one. Now, here are all the potential candidate clips or candidate sections of my clip that contain I would cry. Now, how do I know which one I'm going to use? Well, what Media Composer has done is it's gone through and it's actually scored each one of these potential clips on a scale of 0 to 100. Obviously, 100 being the closest match and 0 being the worst. So in a lot of cases, it's the first couple that you're going to go with. Now, you'll notice that I have one that's in the close-up shot, one that's in the wide shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click on the close-up. I'm actually just going to come back 10 frames because it's going to be a little bit cut off. And all I'm going to do is hit play and take a listen. Basically, I would cry if I could be good enough. He would to cry. Go. There you go. Boom. I would cry just like that. I wonder if it's going to find it just as good on the wide shot. I would cry if I could be good. He would enough. cry. Yes, he absolutely would. So you'll see Phrase Find has found those clips right away. What I'm going to do is just remove those in points that it's added in there. And let's find the next one here. I know somewhere in here he says Home Depot. Okay. I'm just going to hit enter. Now you'll see again it found it so much quicker this time than it did last time. You'll see Boom, there's a score of 90 and 90. Let's see if I was right. I'm just going to come back 10 frames because it literally parks it on the exact frame where he says it. I'll just come back uh, about half a second and hit play. Job working at Home Depot. Boom, Home Depot. Let's see it on the wide shot. Back 20 Job frames. Job working at Home Depot. Home Depot. Boom, there we go. Let's do one more here just to show it to you. He mentions cross country. Okay, boom, cross country. There you go. How about in this interview shot? I can race cross country if I want to. Yes, he absolutely can. Let's see it in the wide shot. I can race cross country if I want to. Yes, he absolutely can. So you can see the power of this fantastic tool. I'm not going to say it's a new tool because it's been a tool that we've had at our disposal for a while. It's just that inside of version 8 of Media Composer, new editors and even editors who have edited on Media Composer a long time 
they've been stuck. They haven't had the ability to upgrade to version 8 because these two tools that are an essential part of their workflow have been holding them back. But with the release of version 8, you can now upgrade to these fantastic new features and have this power at your fingertips to find anything you need to find with the click of a mouse. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.